Okay, here you go, girls. Okay, can you be quiet? There you go. Okay, let's see if they cooperate. Hi there, I'm Alicia and welcome to Palm Pantry. Today I thought I would address some chicken questions I've been getting. I give had an uptick lately in questions about my chickens, the types, the coop, what I do with them, um, what kind of lifestyle they live as far as like free range or in a run and that kind of thing. And so I thought I would just do a whole video kind of compiling those and just running you through what life is like out here for my ladies. So let's go on into the run. I just want to give the disclaimer up front though that there is more than one right way to do chickens. I have seen a lot of different setups and maybe not everybody does it the same way I would like to but every one of those I have seen is a better life than what those same chickens would be getting if they were in a factory farm. So you have to kind of balance the lifestyle you want to give your chickens with the lifestyle that you have and the room that you have and the resources you have and just kind of make it work for you and find that area in between that works. So what I'm showing you today is what I do. That doesn't mean if you do it differently or somebody else does it differently that it's wrong. It's just what works for me and the kind of life I want my chickens to have. So it's the middle of March and we're coming out of winter and just starting spring. So things are really brown around here. In the summer, all this is green and we occasionally have to move the fence to um, mow in here because the grass and plants get pretty high. But uh, the first thing I wanted to point out is the coop. Actually, let's start with the run because that's probably the most common questions I get are the coop and the run. And I'm you're in the middle of the run right now. So I consider myself a free range chicken farmer, even though I don't always just let them out to free range. I call it controlled free range. The, I use a movable fence, obviously one of these, and it, I can move, I, I don't move the whole thing all the time. Some people do that. They move pasture like every day or every week. I don't, I will move sections when I want something, like I just moved this corner out a little bit so that the chickens could start digging through here. And when things green up a little bit in a couple weeks and I'm going into the um, garden, I will move all the stuff over there in because these beds are part of my garden. I will move it in and I will push the fence out that way behind you, um, giving them more space that way. The only spots that are always in the fence for me are the coop where they stay and this tree so that they have shelter um, from like snow and stuff in the winter and they also have shade in the summer. I use these movable electric fences. I actually, my solar battery for the electric fence. Let me see if I can get them to be quiet. Hey Remy. Uh, my solar battery is dead. It got hit with a weed whacker and died and it's still fine because the chickens were trained on it. And the fence is, this is a four or five year old fence. I'd have to do the math. And it's been moved a lot, so it's had worse for wear. But if you wanted to, I know plenty of people that just have a large run for their chickens and never let them out. I do let mine out in the evenings in the winter so that they can roam around outside and they love that. But I limit that time because chickens are destructive. <laughs> They'll go in front of the house and dig up my um, flower beds. They'll go over to the blueberries and dig into the roots. And so I try to just limit the amount of time they have beyond the fence, knowing that I give them plenty of side of time and place in the fence. For, um, for governmental or like humane, certified humane standards, I believe I looked up, the amount of space for a chicken to roam that's required to be certified humane is only two square feet per chicken. Some of my bigger, my older Orpingtons, like the black one and the um, splash one there, they're like between 12 and 18 inches themselves. Could you imagine if they only had a little bit of space each? So this is far more than what's needed for that. And so I'm comfortable calling them free range, even though they're not just randomly roaming everywhere, which is also for their safety. We have hawks, we have coyotes, we have neighbor's dogs that sometimes come over, just, just things that are a danger to them. So they have plenty of space in here. I don't even know how many square feet this is, but it is far, 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 far more than two square feet per chicken. I have seen people with like just a large run that's fixed and doesn't move and that's fine. I have seeing people do different variations of things that do move like a chicken tractor or even fences that are using with T-posts and they just pull the T-posts out and move it and move it around. Our original plan with the coop, the, um, I'll show you when we get over there, the, the bottom of the coop that it stands on has holes in it so we can put in wheels we have. Our original plan was to put, put it in two places during the year here 
and then in the middle of the garden in the winter so that we could move the fence, keep them in. And we just ended up deciding after the work it took to level it every time and stuff like that, that we would just rather leave it in one place and move the fence around more. They're getting plenty of roaming space. So like right now I have the fence partly covering like part of my, what will be my corn patch this year and about a little under half of my raised beds. And I, a few months ago had the fence that's now behind you scooted forward and I had more of my raised beds in the mix here. They're talking to me because I'm out here and they know I have treats for them, <laughs> but they're noisy. So there are a lot of different ways if you want to give your chickens new space to graze on. You don't have to have one of these electric fences. I find them easy to move, um, easy to adjust, just a small section of if I want. But there, there's other ways to do it. And it doesn't have to be the, this big of a space. I just like ha them having plenty of space. Let's go check out the coop. Okay, this is my chicken coop. And it was meant to build a chicken coop that matched the house. So that's why it's black and white, because our house is white with black, a black roof and black um, details. Might be changing that soon. But it, this is obviously the door the chickens go in and out of. These are the nesting boxes we can access. See, there's one in here. There are five nesting boxes. We have a piece of wood we just grab and put here if we want to hold this up. Um, five is more than what's needed for the 11 chickens that I have, but that was just the plan that came with this coop. I think just because it fit well across it and it's fine. It's totally fine. We, the windows we use partly for ventilation, um, like this one's open right now all the way. This one's not. In the winter, we can leave them open just a little bit. You always want to have good ventilation in your coop. And there's also hardware cloth over it so that even though it has screens, predators like raccoons won't be able to get in here because raccoons can just tear through screens. And we have those too. Um, got the ramp that goes up and down. I'll take you around here. So right here, this is what I was talking about. I can, we have wheels that we can stick right in those holes and lift the coop and roll. It's actually way easier to roll than you would think. All of this dead grass will be green in like a month. Um, this is the human access door. So this was the only part we, these were just plans that we bought online and my husband built with it. And the, the one disappointment I had was from the pictures online, I thought that this was a full size human door that I could stand up right in and walk in and I can't, it's, a lot bigger access than a lot of coops have, but so it's it's fine, but it's just, I thought it was full size. Inside of the coop here, hello there, sweetheart. We've got a couple roosting bars that sometimes in the winter, I, I have this here to put some water on inside their coop when they don't want to come out. And then this is to hold on sometimes in the winter, only when it gets like negative, we put a little radiant heater. It looks like a flat screen TV. And we just use that to help it stay against the wall if they want to use that. So that is the inside of the coop. And then around the back side here. So my husband built these on. This is for food. So it goes in there. If I fill this up, it lasts them about a week. It's got a cap that we put on there um, at night so that critters don't get into it and fill it from the top. This is something that has not worked for us. This was a water system. You've probably seen these on Pinterest if you're looking up chicken setups where you put it in the water and then down here are these little cup things. Um, we have a couple of the cup ones and a couple of the ones you just hit the button. And none of, I have never been able to get my chickens to drink out of anything other than those kind of waterers right there. And I have done all the tricks. I've put stuff in the water. I've shown them. I've held them and put their beaks to it. I have, uh, I've taken all the other water away and it just, nothing has worked as far as them, I just don't have very bright chickens, I guess. They're smart for other things, but not that. Hello there. This is Mary Kay. I will try to do get a picture of each one and introduce them to you at the end. So moving on from the coop and the run. See, this is where I will move that fence further back. And I will undo it from this area. Don't mind my bags of dirt over there. I will unmove it from around there, put it along the front, and stretch it way out that way in a week or two. Okay. 
talking about food and treats since we were just doing this food and water i do give them i've shown in azure halls before um i give them scratch and peck feeds for layer i do crumble mary Kay, you're loud I do crumble instead of the okay. Here. Here. okay I do crumble feed instead of the uh, pieces I originally wanted to start with the pieces that has like just the mix of ingredients because I like to do things as close to what I think their natural way should be as possible but they like to dig through and pick out their favorite parts and waste a lot of the other stuff that's not their favorite and so i switched to crumbles just to save on feed because it's not a cheap feed i could do it myself and it's just not something i have time for right now or not something i want to make time for right now along with all the other things but other than the scratch and peck feed the waters i have i have three so i have one inside that gets cleaned every night in the morning, I bring out fresh water for them, swap it with whatever one is two days old here. In the summer, I'll swap it a little more often on really hot days. I'll bring out like some water with ice in it or something like that, or cucumber or mint or something like that. And in, in the winter, I have to bring it out to replace frozen water sometimes. So also along with that in the summer, as far as treats and things go, I don't really give my chicken supplements like oyster shell or uh, there's some kelp in their feed. I think that's natural. Um, I don't. I, there's, there's like a whole market for like boutique little supplements. I do put like an herb and rose petal mix in their like little treat buckets. Um, and by treat buckets, I kind of mean like my compost pail. Hi, girl. There you go. So I have a little tub in my kitchen that I put scraps in and bring out to my chickens every morning. And that's the first thing they look for. They don't go to the food. They go to my scraps to see what I brought them. And so that's like just your regular kitchen scraps. I put in their water, I'll put a very small splash of apple cider vinegar. Occasionally, I will put a, a clove of garlic. Some people say chickens can't have garlic. I find that's not true, and it's pretty good for their health, actually, and they like it when I give it to them. In the summer, I will bring them, like, frozen watermelon slices, some ice water, stuff like that. In the winter, I'll bring them treats that are a little more carb-based, like, corn or you can get organic corn even like frozen section or canned whatever I have left from summer if I have cobs that I really don't want to keep that I grew that maybe had too much bug damage I put them in the freezer so I can pull them out and toss them the chickens in the winter um, those carbs help them stay a little warm like the burning of the carbs helps their body stay warmer in the summer so I will sometimes bring them those pretty close like before right before nightfall with enough time to eat it because if you leave food out in their chicken run at nightfall other critters will eat it overnight like mice and stuff that you don't want to attract so and then the other things that I will bring them all year long I bring them soldier fly larva I used to give them mealworms when I first got them but I've been using this stuff lately here you go guys which of course they love they love all the treats I've been using this stuff lately because I've been um, researching companies and trying to switch over to companies that do things the way I like and also, I, I've learned that soldier fly larva actually has more nutrients than uh, mealworms. So there's a lot more calcium in these, which helps their um, eggshell development, their feathers. They, they grow feathers twice a year. They grow winter feathers in the fall while molt and shed and grow winter feathers. And in the spring, or when they're babies and they're getting older, they grow in their real, real feathers. And they need protein for that. So I've, they've been enjoying these. But I wanted to show you a few ideas of things to do with treats besides just giving them to your chickens. Because when I got my chickens, I originally got them as a compliment to the garden, not really for the eggs. The eggs are bonus here. Hi. Yeah. So there's a couple things I use these for. Let me bring it down to their level and I can show you. So one of the things is when you have chickens that are a little bit more skittish, which sometimes can be like you didn't handle them a lot when they were babies, but it's also a breed thing. These speckled Sussex right here, they have always been friendly and not scared. Orpingtons, these were my first batch. These are what's left of my first batch of chickens years ago, and they were the most handled, and Orpingtons are very friendly anyways. But the white one over there, the white leghorn, very skittish. See if we can get her to... 
Oh, look at that. Hey, Henry, you want some? But if you want to get them to come to you, either you want to um, socialize them, or hi, Aki, or maybe you want to catch them to give them some treatment or clip wings or something like that. Treats just make it a lot easier so you don't end up chasing around chickens. Here is my favorite thing to do with them, with treats. I use them to target where I want the chickens working for me. So right now, I want them working on these two raised beds. Very weedy, and I need to get the weeds out and add dirt so that I can grow things in them this year. It's work for me. They will dig through all of this grass and these weeds and upend them and eat part of them in an effort to uncover or every little soldier fly larva that I've dropped in here. I will do the same thing taking them out to the garden. If there's an area like right now in the spring, things are starting to grow weeds and I will take them out and drop some on an area that weeds are just starting that I just don't have time to go pick and let them just dig through and do that kind of thing. If you want some of these things, I do have a coupon code for these below. Hi girls. A coupon code for these below that I think gets you like 10% off. Another thing, another cool thing about this company is that they actually use waste from restaurants and grocery stores and farmers markets to grow these larvae so that you don't have as much food waste going into the landfills. Like I said, they get more uh, calcium with these. I don't give mine oyster shells. I give them their own shells, but that just helps the calcium and the protein because they're they're larvae. It's, it's pretty much protein and, and healthy fats. Helps them grow good strong feathers, helps their immune system stay good, especially in the winter when the bugs are a little more scarce. It's a good time to give them treats like this. But this is what they do. I also like that these don't have any preservatives or additives. Sometimes the, the bags, the cheaper bags in the store will have stuff to keep them to keep all your mealworms or soldier fly larvae or grasshoppers or whatever dried little critter you have. They will have additives to help them keep them separated or keep them fresher longer. And these are just plain larvae, which matches the lifestyle I want to give my chickens. Hey, Aki, you want some? Also, sometimes I will um, let my chickens out for something and then maybe I'm going to leave. And so I want to bring them back into the run. And I don't want to go all over my property looking for them. But when they get used to you giving treats, here's what, here's a little trick. I will just walk out my door and I will start walking towards the chicken run, shaking this bag and they all start coming and they just follow me right in. I can toss them on the ground, they'll get busy and I can close up the run. All right, you guys, I'm going to try to get a shot of each one of these to introduce you to, to them. There are ran they have very random names because we each, when I get new chickens, we each name one, unless I only get four because we're a family of five. So there are some random people in my family, especially the kids, have some really random methods for naming theirs. So like my son always names a chicken after another bird that doesn't fly. So he has had a penguin who's no longer with us. He was a rooster. Um, these are all hens, by the way. I don't have any roosters right now. There are a lot of benefits to having a rooster. I just don't have one right now. So we've had penguin, we've had ostrich, we had um, dodo, like a dodo bird, and auk, which is another type of penguin. And then one of these is named Henry, even though that's a boy's name, because my daughter went to school and was like, I have to name another chicken. What should I name it? And someone said Henry, and so she named it Henry. So there's a lot of different methods behind how we name our chickens. So um, I'm going to try to get a picture of each one so that you can know, and I'll put up their name and what type of chicken they are. I get a lot of questions about the types and I have quite a mix out here. This is the first year that I won't be getting new chickens in the spring. It's hard to resist, but I don't wanna crowd my coop anymore. So, and I'm getting more than enough eggs with what I have. Usually you want to, so chicken math is a real thing. <laughs> when I first got my, my very first batch of chickens, there was six of them. And I thought this is like the perfect amount. I don't think I'll ever vary from six. I like this number. And then the next spring, I bought four more because the, then you see different types that you want and you have room. And then you also realize eventually that their egg production drops off 
after like a year it gets cut in half and then cut in half again the next year and stuff so like the two i have still from my original batch um because they're old and they, some have just died of old age um they don't really lay much anymore i still keep them around because i love them but this will be the first year that i'm not getting any new ones even though there's new ones i want but i feel like my coop is full it's supposed to be 15 fit 15. I have 11 in there and I feel like it's tight. I like to give my chickens a lot of room to breathe. Anyways, I will try to close you out with meeting the ladies, okay? Thank you for joining me today and I hope you have a good week.